If you're worried about your privacy on Facebook, this video is for you. Facebook has lost its popularity these past years because of data collection and privacy issues. And in this video, I'm going to show you five alternatives to Facebook. Hey guys, this is Bea. Welcome to Responsive Muse channel. If it's the first time that you watch one of my videos, then I should let you know that below this video you can see a bell icon that you should click to subscribe to the channel. You will also get notified whenever a cool video is out, so don't miss it. Now back to the subject in this video, I'm going to show you five alternatives to Facebook. Well, actually it's a five plus one, there'll be an extra one that I'll show you by the end of this video. It's a bit different than the other, so it's just a bonus, an extra. If you are in the creative industry, then you might want to stick to the end of the video and find out about this bonus social network that I'm going to talk about. Since the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal, many users are looking for other alternatives, other social networks that will respect their privacy and they won't sell their data to other companies. Mark Zuckerberg, you did so wrong here selling our privacy. But guys, we can't deny that everybody's on Facebook. We got business, we got famous people, we got your friends and your family. All these social networks that I'm going to talk about are not yet Facebook killers, not till this date, but they've got a lot of active users that most of them are fed up users from Facebook and decided to cancel their accounts and move to these new ones. So I think we should give them a shot and we should explore what they can offer us. First alternative to Facebook is called Vero. Vero is an app with no ads, no algorithm arranging your posts, no data mining and has a chronological feed. This app plans to be a subscription based app. Their first plan was to grant free access for life for the first million subscribers. But after Facebook scandal, they hit this number pretty fast. So they decided to extend the free subscriptions till further notice. So what's the difference? For Vero, the user is the customer, not the product. So users can control everything and don't have to worry about their privacy. Vero tries to be be more intuitive when sharing content no matter if it's a photo text music TV shows everything is more visual you can also purchase products without leaving the app which makes this app more user-friendly Vero is an app that you can download from the App Store and also get it from Google Play and I've downloaded it on my phone so I can show you guys how Vero looks inside when you sign up you have the options to follow other people so I follow some accounts random accounts one of them is the Vero official account and you can see the pause on your feed and when you want to create a new pause it is indeed very intuitive you just click one button and you have the different options you can choose from music books tv shows if it's a link or just a picture from your camera as you can see i'm posting a song and the process has been pretty easy and in the last step you get to choose with whom you want to share this post with your close friends with your friends acquaintances and followers now let's move to alternative number two it's called diaspora diaspora relies on three main principles decentralization freedom and privacy decentralization means that all the data isn't held in the same server owned by a huge corporation but it's held in many different independent servers all around the world and you have the freedom to choose which one you want to join by freedom they mean that you don't need to use your real identity to use this social network and interact with others you can be whoever you want to be and Diaspora doesn't use your data for any purpose other than allowing you to connect and share with others. Here I am in my Diaspora account. When I first sign up, I had to choose a pod. I selected the option to automatically join a pod. I was also encouraged to follow some hashtags. So I selected some hashtags like movies, digital marketing, and web design. So I'm going to scroll down and I see that I have in my feed some posts of people using the hashtags that I follow. As I can see this one here, which is movies. This is the hashtag that I'm following. So, it's going to be keep on scrolling down. I don't know these people. I'm not following anybody that I know. It's true that when I joined this, I was just asked for a username and my email and that's it. So, it's true that you can use just any name and um, there was no authentication code or nothing similar like that that I found. So, it does seem interesting. I haven't written this here, but I guess that that's what I'm going to publish my first pass. And this is public and here I can choose with whom I want to share this with okay and I'm just gonna click on 
share. This will be my first pause here in diaspora. Alternative number three is MeWe, a social network launched in 2012 that is browser-based but also has an app for iOS and Android. It hit 2 million users in 2018 and MeWe uses the hashtag not for sale, meaning our private lives are not for sale. There are no ads, no spying or tracking. You can control the content and your personal information. A great thing about MeWe is that it includes a private one-to-one -one chat and also group chats whose members share some interesting comments. So if you join these group chats, you might be aware that you will be chatting with a lot of strangers. But still, I think this sounds great. So this is my MeWe account and the first post that I can see on my feed is uh, from MeWe's official account. It's the video, MeWe, your private life is not for sale. So here you can browse some groups. I'm going to click this tab and I haven't joined any group yet. So this is actually the MeWe News and Updates group. And here I guess that there are the open groups that I can join. So let's say I want to join the foodies. And I have different groups here that I can apply for. Some are open and just can just click on join and that's it. Let me check another one like for example travel. Same thing, some you need to apply for, others you just can automatically join. Animals and pets, same thing. Here is the chat. Right now I don't have any chat with private persons or even groups, but it's pretty interesting. Here you get also events. There's a calendar with all the events and also pages, which we can see here some feature pages like BBC News, Fox News, and some famous people too. Alternative number four is Mastodon. Mastodon is an open source social network that works similar to Twitter and Tumblr. It has over 2 million active users and is also decentralized. Remember, decentralization means that there's no huge corporation. There's not only one person owning all these data. Besides, anyone can create their own server of Mastodon. You can share images, videos, and the text is limited to 500 characters. You can also combine all these. There are a lot of communities to join and there are many moderators that you can approach for help to protect yourself. This is a big difference from Facebook because when you had a problem in Facebook and you wanted to reach somebody from Facebook to help you, it would take you quite a lot of time to get a response or sometimes you just wouldn't get any. So here it does seem easier to approach a moderator, or at least that's what they say. So yeah, it is pretty similar to Twitter, I would say. So I can see this is my feed. And let's say if I click local timeline, I get a new timeline and also federated timeline. And here also I get other timelines too. I can see that I have a limit of characters, which is 500. And this will be pretty easy as if you're familiar to Twitter, this is really simple. Just type here whatever's on your mind and click on two. And alternative number five is Minds. So Minds is another open source social media site, but they're so huge different from others. You get paid in cryptocurrency. You get paid for using the site, for uploading pictures and videos, for writing blogs, for sharing content. This is crazy. I never thought you would get paid social media unless you were famous or an influencer. But apparently everyone gets paid in Minds. Cryptocurrency, yes, but you still get paid. Minds was a response to the censorship and data mining of sites like Facebook and Twitter. Minds claims that any opinions are welcome and they don't engage in user tracking or selling personal data. So this is my Minds profile. And here, when I signed up, I was asked what I preferred, like what are my interests. So this is what I've selected. And I guess here you can click on and off so you can your feed actually changes whenever you select one of them. And up here is where we create my blog and speak my mind. Here's where I share content. It seems pretty intuitive. Here's where I attach. I don't know what this means. So click here. Okay. So remember that minds, there is no censorship here. So you will understand why if you click this and what happens if I click on hashtags? Okay, I can select up to five hashtags here. We get a paywall and it says that I should enter how many tokens users should send me in order to see this poster. So this is the way, so this is the way you earn money and you click on the pause. So here on my right, I have some 
boosted content and also suggested channels. I keep on scrolling down and I click on discovery. I get the hottest, the top and the latest 12 to 24 hours and even up to a year. You can select if you want an image, video or all. Okay, I do find this intuitive and what's happen what happens here in wallet. Okay, so here's where we start earning our rewards. So I guess that we should join with a phone number and here you have how many tokens you have. Right now I've got zero. Next payout is in 12 hours. I'm not going to get there. And if I scroll down, you have other things like you buy tokens, you can withdraw and also you can see you can view your transactions. And finally, I'm going to share with you guys the bonus social network that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's called Elo. And if you are in the creative industry, you're going to love this. Elo isn't really an alternative to Facebook. They never intended to be one, although a lot of people sign up to Elo after Facebook scandal. It's actually more similar to Instagram than to Facebook. What Elo really is, is a social network for creative people, a community of artists, a place where you can share your creations, your art. There are no ads, feeds is chronological, you can post text, photos and videos. And as I said before, it's more similar to Instagram than to Facebook. But the big difference is that you can upload images in any aspect ratio, even nude pictures, and you can sell your work easily without leaving this app. I think it's a great idea to explore these other social networks, explore these other communities that we can join. Maybe you can even find more opportunities and even easier ones to sell your own products inside these social networks. That's I think what I find the most, most, most interesting about this. Anyways, guys, if you're just fed up with ads and with Mark Zuckerberg selling your data to other people, then you have all these new alternatives that you can check out. If you like this video, remember to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. The button is right below this video too. You should also ring the bell right next to the subscribe button so you will get notified whenever one of my videos is out and you won't miss any of them because I've got so many things to share with you guys. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.